I hope you're ready to go and all set up. Now I'm going to use this small brush, uh, the little detail brush, and I'm going to run up a few trunks. And the, the trunks on a lot of these coconut trees are not uh, a real deep brown. They're a sort of a greyish brown, and um, they actually vary in colour a bit. Uh, but if you use a greyish brown, we don't want it too dark. Uh, but we'll just see how that looks initially. Uh, we can start the trunk from within this foliage here and run it up. And that seems pretty good to me. The colour has come up there, although it's picked up a bit of green. But we'll run another guy there. And another guy there. Now you can go along these trunks and just put little scratch marks in to indicate the segmentation on the on the trunk but really it's not necessary. However if you feel you want to do that by all means do so. Now the tricky bit on these palm trees on these uh, coconut palms is the actual foliage itself. It gives a lot of people a lot of trouble and uh, olive green being a little bit transparent uh, may not be quite as successful as what orange and Payne's grey is. And besides that, with orange and Payne's grey, you can get it much darker than olive green. So I'm going to use uh, Payne's grey and chrome orange uh, to get the, the, the foliage in. Now the really important thing is that all of the fronds on these coconut trees come from the top, right there. They don't grow down the trunk. So we start from the top and I'm using the corner of the brush, the edge of the brush, right on the end of the trunk. And then I'm pulling the frong down. This one up here will be going up and falling over a bit. This one here. and. So we go. Surprisingly, it's hard to do it slowly. Uh, you'll find that you get, I don't say that you should go at it like a bull at a gate, but I do say that if you try and do it slowly, it's actually harder to do. And this one here. Try and avoid overlapping them, as I've done. It may give you lots of trouble. But just stroke it a little bit. And stroke it away like so. And surprisingly in the Philippines now, they have miniature coconut trees, the actual coconuts are growing, touching the ground. I've seen them personally. The coconuts, the trees are only about 15 feet high and the coconuts are actually touching the ground. Uh, so these, uh, uh, the, these really tall ones, 30, 35 feet or so tall, will slowly be a thing of the past, I guess, in uh, 50 years or so time when the other guys start to take over. Now sometimes I put a, the head of the coconut tree in first and then run the trunk up to it. That's another way that you can put them in as well. Uh, put the, the frong in first, the, um, um, the head in first and then run the trunk up to the tree. Now I've made that a little bit darker so that you can see the first one is going up behind it. Uh, the same with this guy here. You can make this guy a little bit darker here too. So that you can clearly see it's not part of this other guy here. Could be made a bit bigger here. I guess when all these tall trees go out of business, it, uh, all the monkeys will be out of a job too that run up them and pick the coconuts for the owners, plantation owners. Now that's, that's coming up really nicely. Um, 
I suggest you highlight them with uh, a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow green. And just concentrate on one side, the side that's facing out towards the ocean. You can put a tiny bit on the other side, but very little. And I always think that if you go to yellow as the final colour, incidentally it's not the final colour, but because I, ha I want to put a couple of dead prongs in, but they'll be underneath. As far as the leaf is concerned, it's the, as far as the frongs are concerned, it's the final colour, a little bit of yellow on them, just here and there. And then come back underneath with a little bit of burnt sienna. You'll always find there'll be a couple of dead frongs hanging down underneath. And of course, if you want a couple of coconuts, plonk a couple of coconuts, two or three coconuts underneath it, like so. Now you need to come back at the bottom here and just cover the trunks a tiny bit here and there, if you feel that's necessary. And how easy is that? That's really easy to get that the vegetation in. But something that's a lot, lot more difficult really than, than that, and that is the ripples in the water. Now, in this particular case, I have set the painting up in such a way that we can run these ripples along here and, um, and run them up to the, the curve here. Now, <coughs> the important thing is to get the paint flat. I hope you can all see that. Get the paint flat, then turn the knife over and pick up the paint on the edge of the knife. When you put the knife on the board, you hold the blade out like so, and you move the knife backwards and forwards, slowly start to roll the knife over, and you get these little ripples coming in onto the beach. How easy is that? Now, we load the knife again, and again, we run another row of these ripples in. And again, if you'd like it, move the knife backwards and forwards on the board and come down the board slowly as well. And you certainly wouldn't want it any better than that. Now I've just washed the brush. Be careful that you get all the turps out of it. And I'm going to pick up Firstly, before I do that, I'm going to also wash this large brush. And just to give the, the painting a tiny bit more texture within the water area, I'm going to run a little bit of this blue in here. Isn't this a bright blue? This is thalo blue and uh, beautiful colour, lovely colour. Use it away just here. And that gives us something to work on with the little waves. Pick up a little bit of that white with your fan brush and you can come along here and just get a few waves in here. And you've got a base underneath the, the wave, you see? How easy is that? little bit in here. But of course, if you've got ripples in here, you don't want too much agitation coming in here. Just a little bit. And a tiny bit up here. As you get further into the distance, the ripples should become more linear and paler in colour. So they can be nice and bright and white here, 
but they should be very faint and linear in the distance. You can go up and down here as much as you like, but keep them very subdued in the background. Very important. I'm going to also just put a little bit of texture into these hills here. Should have been done before we actually put the trees in, but just a little bit of texture in there. And also, I'm going to run just a little bit of grass along here. And don't forget that grass has shadow, the same as anything else does. A little bit of blue there. This is a little bit of the, the blue that we used here. Just run a little bit into the painting there, if you want to. And that's coming up like a million dollars. A little bit of shading in there. And I'm going to I'm going to sign the painting down here in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, that's a great painting for you to have a go at. We're going to run a frame around it. And there we have it. Well, I think that's I think that's a great exercise for you to have a go at. Just going to darken a tiny bit more in here. Looks as if it's not quite joined to the ground. Just darken it a wee bit. That's a little bit of olive green there. Not that it's any darker than Payne's grey and orange, but it will just make it look as if it's joined to the ground. That's all we need. All right, I think that's a great exercise for you to have a go at. Coconut trees are traditionally a difficult tree to do. Um, and ripples in the water, again, is difficult to do. But if you come along to one of the workshops, we'll sort all that out for you. Anyway, we'll make it very easy for you. You'll enjoy your painting, and remember the first brush strokes always the most difficult, and the last one is the most satisfying. Bye.